Fantasy Football Happy Hour with Matthew Berry, served by Applebee's. Welcome to the Fantasy Football Happy Hour. Yes, from the NFL Combine in Indianapolis, Indiana. I'm Connor Rogers alongside Matthew Berry, Jay Croucher. Matthew, I know this isn't your first Combine or no. mine, but Jay, he's running around looking for something to bet he's on. He's a virgin. This place. Combine debutante. Yes. Yeah. Yes. What is, early thoughts? Uh, it's great. It's great having just kind of walking the streets. Oh, there's Dan Quinn just walking yes. around. Uh, everyone seems to congregate at the same spot. So, yeah, I've heard a lot of stories the past past 24 hours, more than I'd heard uh, for most of the season. So it's a good little hot spot. It, it is one of the things that, like, unless you're here and you understand it, like, I, de- I describe it as the NFL prom. And I don't know if that's sure. the best way to describe it. But the, but the idea is, is that, in essence, the F- Super Bowl's over. The new year, the new NFL year hasn't started yet. We're in Indianapolis, which, again, it's it's great city. It's a great host city. I think the Combine should always be in Indianapolis. I know there's talk about moving it at some point in the future. But but you're sort of in the you're in the middle of the country, and there's not a ton of fans around. And so everyone in the NFL, like every coach, general manager, training staff, front office, beat reporters, you know, team executives, like they're all here in one spot. They're all basically in the Indianapolis Convention Center and then the handful of restaurants, bars, hotels around the convention center. And so it is, it is super weird where there have been times where I've just gotten on the elevator and like, oh, what's up, Coach Belichick? Like it just, you know what I mean? Like it, it's, you have access that you wouldn't normally have. Like you share elevators or cabs or like, you know, you're you're at the bar and you're like, sorry, Sean McVay, can I just, can I grab this drink? Yeah. Like, I mean, it's, it is, uh, it's pretty cool. And like, I think all of the, the, the coaches and players, uh, not players, but the coaches and general managers, the team executives, they're so under siege during the, inte- the entire season, and it's so intense preparing for the draft, et cetera, et cetera. And, and from that point forward, it's the one time of year I think they get to relax. Yeah. You know, because they're yes. just like, hey, we don't know. We're like, free agency hasn't opened yet. We're meeting all these players for the first time. We've just started doing our evaluation. So it's, they're more relaxed and they're more like, yeah, hey, man, like how you, like, so it's just, they're very approachable. I think the key is as well is like, it's just a concentrated downtown, which was all the difference with something like this. Yeah. Same thing in Vegas for the Super Bowl. Everyone's just in the same spots. Whereas in like LA for the Super Bowl a couple of years ago, it's like you're not bumping into, you know, Sean McDermott or whatever. So it is a really good spot to have it. Yeah, it's where, why the rumors start here. The yep. free agency and trade talks start here. Of course, you got to sit down with a ton of coaches that we're going to air in plenty of the snippets of that. Yep. On this show. And like you said, they are a little bit more comfortable and honest here, whether it's free agency discussions, whether it's uh, scheme going forward, player usage in fantasy. Uh, there's so much you can get at the yeah. NFL Combine. Yeah, and you get you get a ton of, like, to your point, rumors, tidbits, stuff that, you know, especially late at night, you've had a few drinks, people are like, oh, yeah, oh, that guy sucks. You know yeah. what I mean? Or like, yeah, we ain't bringing that guy back, whatever. And so you sort of get all these rumors and everything like that. And I do a column every year, and I'll do another one. It'll come out, I believe, Monday on rotoworld.com, NBCSports.com for free. I'm a company man. So we'll, we'll get to uh, check that out. But, um, but yeah, it's a, it's, the Combine's always a great time of year, and it's, this is like your Super Bowl. It is. I get to talk to about 40 players, one-on-one interviews here. Um, and it's it's really, really special because this is the time you get to do that. Everybody's enjoying it. It's comfortable. It's not a guarded kind yeah. of event as well. And uh, with that, let's jump right into the Roto World player news because yeah. we do have so much combine buzz already to get through. And I think the first one everybody's already starting about here is what are the Bears going to do with the number one overall pick, guys? I mean, imagine being Ryan Poles, their general manager. Yeah who he did suggest the team could trade Justin Fields before free agency. I mean, here's this quote from Ryan Poles. He said, if we go down that road, I want to do right by Justin as well. No one wants to live in gray. I know that's uncomfortable. I wouldn't want to be in that situation either. We'll see what presents itself and what's best for the organization. Yeah, he's getting traded. I was going to say, every, I mean, it's the worst kept secret in the NFL right now. Everybody thinks the Bears are taking Caleb Williams. They're trading Justin Fields before the draft. As you see right here, Matthew, the 2024 landing spots odds provided by DraftKings, the Falcons at minus 200 to be the landing spot for Justin Fields. Now, and Justin Fields is from that area, right? Right. Yeah. So this is, there's a video that literally just before we went on air, there's a video that's going around social media. I cannot verify this, you know, and by saying I cannot verify, it means I haven't bothered to spend 10 minutes trying to verify it. Like, you know, whatever. I'm, what am I? I'm not a journalist. We all know this. <laughs> But I, so barely I just want a broadcaster. Well, I'm barely a broadcaster. Exactly right. Like I'm, I'm basically a guy that goes around and gets free drinks in India at the combine. That's pretty much it. 
Jay bought me a drink last night, which was very nice. Was just, there a reason or just out of a good goodness of his heart? I guess I, I don't like know. Was, didn't I'm you guys have man. a lot of bets? I'm, a, I'm actually an underrated man. Yeah, you had I, a lot of, I don't think I get my credit. You had a lot of bets on this season. I'm just making sure it wasn't a pay up for any of no, 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 no. He, oh. It was just, Jay, Jay was actually just genuinely had a no. moment of niceness. I yeah, also, and then you can expense it. So yeah. that's yeah. in the best part. Also do want to bring attention. Very happy that Matthew uh, wasn't left alone last night so he doesn't have to complain to Emmett Smith about me and you abandoning him, um, which is a great result out of the evening. Uh, I'll just say this. We had a team dinner. Uh, we'll get to Justin Fields in a second. <laughs> this is more Justin important. Fields could wait. Yeah, Justin Fields can wait. Uh, we had a team dinner and I just want America to know this. We had a team dinner. And so these two guys, their flight was delayed. But so, you know, myself and, and Damien, producer Pete was there. Morgan, who helps out a lot. Matt Casey, the great Matt Casey was there. Chris Sims, the he legend Chris Sims. Head of the table, Chris so, Sims. So, right, head of the table, Chris Sims. So we're all there. Jeff Adams. But Jeff, oh, Jeff not, Adams. Cannot so forget Jeff we, Adams. Jeff the brain Adams of the, the operation. Jeff Adams is the glue that keeps everything yes. going. You have no idea. He, he runs all He's the like logistics Andre for the company. Iguodala. Like, oh, yes. we, without Jeff Adams, we're all <laughs> screwed. comparison on point. <laughs> so, anyway, so we're all there. You guys are late. But, <laughs> but no, but unlike... Uh, unlike uh, in an out Burger in Vegas, where <laughs> me and Jeff Adams and Damien were late uh, after the concert, and you guys just bailed as soon as you were done eating, we all stayed. We waited for you guys to show up. We 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 let you guys order entrees. We all got the entrees <laughs> at the wow. same we time. At the same time, we all left at the same time. I'm just saying. I just want to point out that when the situation was reversed, me, producer Pete, Damien, Jeff Adams, that's we all we waited for you guys. Yep. A courtesy that was not extended to us in Vegas. And, no, that's fair. And that's fair because it's hard sitting there drinking margaritas <laughs> and eating lobster <laughs> yeah. for an extra hour or two. On so, NBC's dime. Yeah. Yes. On NBC's yeah. dime. It's a very difficult thing to do. God so bless the I, cock. I give you credit for the perseverance <laughs> to sit through that table. <laughs> Back up producer Pete. Peacock. Just, he yeah. just, I'm talking about Peacock, of course. Just, he's it's been, it's been a great day. year for <laughs> Peacock. <laughs> Peacock subscriptions uh, are going way Miami up. It was a huge success. The Chiefs Dolphins playoff game. A lot of subscribers. Good one. Yes, tons yeah. of new subscribers. Ton Welcome. Of new and subscribers. if you stuck around, which most of By you have, way, you get to watch this content. Peacock has two shows in the top ten of original shows. This is that's a, actually a true statement. One of which I think we're going to promo a little bit later in the show. Back to Justin Fields. The important part is, is that we I waited add, for you guys. I want to add one more thing. Nice yes, like last night, just really underscore. There's an interesting dynamic between the three of us where I think that the maturity actually works opposite of age. Okay. Where Connor is by far the most mature. I'm second. You're a distant third. All right. Uh, and how, just, how so? It just manifests itself. You, how so? Well, you're the one. You 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 begin the night as the favorite in the market to go home last. Okay, so sure. That is, a, that is a fact. That yeah, is a yeah. fact. And then I'm a uh, I'm a slight favorite ahead of Connor. Yeah, right. but it is interesting. Yes. But the is the, why is, is that? Why is that a sign of maturity though? That's what I don't understand. <laughs> like that's literally how I do my job. Uh, here in, in combine, like in all seriousness, it's like no, I listen. I like to I like to get after it when uh, when I can. But the but the, <laughs> but the idea, no, like you know, like me and my wife, we like we like to go out and we'll you know we'll we'll have fun. But my point is, is that at the combine, mm. seriously, like the way I do that column, and I've done that column for years and years and years. That column was the first column to to predict Tom Brady to the Buccaneers. Dead serious. Like you can go back and look at that. Like I I was just like. I'm hearing Tom Brady the Buccaneers at a time where I was like, he's not leaving the Patriots. And then other people like maybe the Raiders, like no one had had the Buccaneers, the seven and nine yeah. at the time Buccaneers on there. And I'm like, I'm hearing the Buccaneers from a really good source. Um, so that comms done pretty good about breaking news. And the way I get that news is like at midnight, yep. you know, alcohol, with, infused. With alcohol infused. Yeah. So yeah. that's, no, it's that's, actually part of the job here at the Combine. That's fair. I was probably more thinking of um, Hakkasan with Steve Aoki. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that was We're just three listen. and we say goodbye. Yes. Yeah, Vegas is my town. I yes. love I'm, I'm a good time in Vegas. There's no question about that. All right. Back to Justin Fields. Yeah. All right. So there was a video going around. Poor, poor uh, Steven. I don't know how he's going to cut this up. Back to Justin Fields. There's, a, vid there's, a, there's a video going around social media that I have not verified. Supposedly, the video is taken, but it was supposedly posted by Justin Fields' manager. It is Justin Fields very excited, jumping around, very excited, and everything like that, very happy. And supposedly, in the background, you can hear the manager say, "You're going home." So, <laughs> again, if you buy all of this, it would think that Justin Fields is going to be an Atlanta Falcon. That would. That's what that would mean. Right. And again, they're the, they're, the, they're, the they're, they're minus 200 on, on DraftKings. They're the heavy favorites. And the second favorite's the Bears, which 
Nobody here thinks the Bears are keeping Justin yeah, Fields. Yeah, yeah, that's a bad bet. I would be stunned. if I just don't know why. And Caleb Williams right now, he is uh, minus 1,600 on DraftKings As to go first be. overall. Yep. And everything that we've heard is that you know, yep. that's effectively done and that it will be Caleb Williams. I know the past couple of years, those markets have flip-flopped where Stroud was the favorite to go to one for a while. Aiden Hutchinson, the previous year, yeah. was favorite. Evan Neal was favorite for a time, and then just randomly Trayvon Walker went number one, <laughs> which uh, he probably shouldn't have judged on what he's done. But this one seems pretty clear cut, and there is just there's no point having Fields on the roster. You can't have Justin Fields as your backup when he's about to get a big contract. They will trade him, but are you surprised, Connor, at the I guess lack of relative interest for Fields? A little bit, because when you look at the available options outside of Kirk Cousins on the pro market, there's not a lot of guys that are starting quarterbacks with upside, which Fields has right now. He legitimately sure. has upside. But I think the problem is a lot of these teams are here wondering what can we do in the draft, right? One and two seem pretty easy, maybe even the Patriots at three. But you have the teams like the Raiders, like the Vikings, like the Broncos, like the Falcons that are wondering how many quarterbacks are we going to like in this draft? Are they going to make it to us? And is the door open for us to go up if we want? And then when you get the answers to no, maybe the Falcons are realizing, hey, there's a guy we like, but we can't go up and get him. We would trade for Justin Fields instead. I mean, Raheem Morris uh, spoke from the podium yesterday, and was, I'm paraphrasing here, but he said something effective like, yeah, you know, if we'd had better quarterback play last year, meaning the Falcons, if the quarter Falcons had a better quarterback play, I'm probably not here. It's quarter yeah. of the week. Which is, yeah, by the play. way, a thousand percent true. hundred yep. percent, yeah. Right? You know, and so um, I, I, if, if this is happening, meaning if Justin Fields is getting traded to the Falcons, I love the move. I love the move for the Falcons. Like, I like Justin Fields. I think he is a... I think he's obviously a great fantasy quarterback, but I think he is a good NFL quarterback. I don't think he's been particularly helped by the by the scheme, the coaching, or the players around him in Chicago. I don't think it's all on that. I do think right. Justin Fields has some some uh, some growth that he needs to do as as a as a passer and and a reader of defenses. But still, like I think, you know, he's made enough plays in his college career and as a pro, he lit up my Commanders. You know what I mean? Like I, like. I think, that, and I just think about the skilled players that are there in Atlanta. You know, you think about Bijan Robinson, you think about Kyle Pitts, you think about Drake London. Like, there's some pieces there, and a and good a, offensive line. Very good offensive line. Jonu Smith was released by the Falcons. So, you know, by the way, so he'll be a Steelers Steeler soon. Yeah, I was yeah. just gonna say, I can't wait for uh, Najee Harris to just sit there and watch Jonu Smith do jet sweeps <laughs> for Arthur Smith with the Steelers. Can't wait to see that in the uh, red zone next year as Jalen Warren is just sitting on the sideline going. Can I get hey, can I'm I get a, a touch over here? Right. Yeah, yeah no. of course not. Free Jalen Warren. I'm gonna I'm starting that right now. Um but uh I think that would be a home run move for the Falcons. Yeah. I think Fields as well. He is I think pretty clearly to this point, he's not in the tier of elite quarterback that can really overcome his context. And in Atlanta he'll have the best context of his career between the offensive line and the weapons. So I mean, yeah, if they if they get field, I mean, I think they are immediately the favorite to win the NFC South. If you're the Falcons, oh, think of think yeah, about maybe. I, yeah. I agree. Saints, Bucks. Like it's not I was going to say the Panthers Bucks. Are, if the Bucks take, if the Bucks get, if they bring Evans and Baker Mayfield back, I think they're yeah. right there. Yeah, they're an eight, nine, nine, and they talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but, the Saints are eight, nine every single yeah, season. It feels like, and it feels like the Falcons. Like they were, they almost won the division despite getting basically a zero from the quarterback yes. position. If Fields is just the, if he's a seven out of ten, then all of a sudden that could be an eleven and six win team. I think yeah. Raheem Morris should probably be the favorite to win Coach of the Year just because there is such that easy scope. And if he's going to give great quotes like that, that'll help his case as well. That's a good point. Um, so good yeah, point. I think the Falcons well, they will be the favorite. And if division. I'm the Falcons, I look at this draft and go, okay, we're going to get maybe the fourth best quarterback in this draft picking at eight. Maybe There's, you get Penix. Maybe you get Penix, the McCarthy, Bo Nix conversation. Right. Right. So, because you probably can't go up. Or you trade what's probably going to be day two capital for Justin Fields, and you get to use the eighth pick on a defense that needs more help. Sure. While you have playmakers already, or maybe they go get another playmaker. You never know with the Falcons. I think it's a sound strategy by yep. Atlanta if they did this move. Yep. I, think I think it's so. cost effective. All right. <laughs> Speaking of cost effective, <laughs> Broncos general manager George Payton said no teams have reached out about Russell Wilson. There's clearly. No market right now, guys, for Russell Wilson, who we all that, expect to not be a Denver Broncos. Does that include NBC? Because we, <laughs> Russell Wilson could fit in right on the table right here. We, yeah, we, you know, let's ride. Crowded. Come on. <laughs> we're getting a little crowded. Yeah, right. I, it's a little strange that there's no interest whatsoever. Russell, Russ was fine. It's got to be the money. Yeah. I would think was, the money. I think it's the money. It's got to be the money. I think, I think my guess is most teams would be like, he's going to get released, and then we can take a shot at him. For half the price. For half the price. Yeah, exactly. That's that's what it's got to be. Because I agree with you. Like, Russell Wilson is fine. Yeah. 
He was, I, be I believe last year, that he was 18th in EPA per play, 18th in PFF grade, which makes sense because by the eye test, he was about the 18th best quarterback in football. You can see uh, the odds provided by DraftKings. The Steelers are minus 225. Uh, to be the landing spot for us. The Broncos are distant at 7-1, to one, and then the Raiders, Falcons, uh, and Patriots are the other teams in that mix. I mean, the Steelers, I think they do make sense. It feels like a Steelerish thing. I know there is the talk of, you know, Kenny Pickett versus Mason Rudolph in camp. <laughs> that feels like a battle that no one wins and America right. loses. Right. <laughs> um, but Russell Wilson, he would be an upgrade over both of those guys. He would, and the Steelers, going and getting a veteran is the route I think they're going to go rather than look in this draft again. They don't want to add another young quarterback and have to wait through that and deal with all of that so when it comes down to it it'll be a Russell Wilson a Jacoby Brissett a player like that and for the Steelers what we saw last year that's an upgrade and would yeah. be great for them I, I will say it's interesting you're like, very distracted by yeah. <laughs> we're actually uh, getting worried yeah, yeah sorry it's no it's okay I I there's know. no need to apologize um, uh, well that's one of the things we're, we're live at the combine and so people are walking around and everything like that and you know and honestly what you were saying wasn't all that interesting <laughs> um, so you, you know, don't even know what you're saying that's the yeah, best part yeah that's a good point um yeah, I agree with Jay that uh, America loses if it's if it's made <laughs> yeah. Mason Rudolph. Yeah, versus it's, my, it's my alien versus predator thing <laughs> of uh, whoever wins, we lose. Yeah, a thousand uh, uh, percent there. It does feel like a kind of Steelers thing to do because the Steelers have, again, the Steelers almost, you know, the, the Steelers were very competitive despite the fact that they got a zero, almost a zero from the quarterback, right? You know, the, the quarterback position. And so um, – Getting Russell Wilson would be an upgrade for them. And they also, again, they have a pretty good defense. Um, they need to improve the offensive line, but it's getting yeah. better. They have a good run game. They have skilled position players, you know, in the passing game. They'll have John U. Smith soon. So that team going 10 and 7 last year is a miracle of modern science. Of course. That team was terrible. Like yeah. they, they were losing games at home to the Patriots and the Cardinals in the back end of the season while they're in a playoff race, and they somehow still scrape in at 10 and the 7. The Tomlin special. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, but that but that's my point. Like, so I mean, you right? If it's a ten and seven team, that division is tough. They got lucky, but with Russell Wilson, that's probably a you know an eleven win team, maybe potentially. Yeah, yeah, I mean the defense is really good. They have they've always had weapons on offense. The offensive line is getting better. Yeah, and I think Russ is a significant upgrade over what they got. Well, he's maybe he's an upgrade over what they had last year. All right, another quarterback out there in the free agent market, uh, Kirk Cousins of the Vikings, of course. And we actually got to hear from Kevin O'Connell on Pro Football Talk yesterday on the idea of bringing Kirk Cousins back and hoping he's back. Take a listen. Anytime free agency is involved, uh, you know, we can, uh, we can have plans. And, and Kirk knows, you know, how I personally feel about him. He knows how our organization feels about him. Uh, I believe Kirk wants to be a Minnesota Viking. I do believe uh, that. I've had some great dialogue with him pretty much weekly throughout the offseason, uh, you know, leading into kind of as we step foot in Indy for the combine. Uh, but there's a process, Mike, you know that, that that's got to play out. And uh, I think if for us to, you know, be able to get to the place where we can come to an agreement and have Kirk Cousins as our quarterback moving forward, which is what, you know, I would love to see happen, uh, we're going to have to find that, that space, that common ground. But ultimately, knowing... Uh, both parties want the same outcome, I do believe. Uh, I feel strongly we're going to be able to get something done. I do believe that, uh, you know, Kirk knows how we feel about him, and I think at this point he's earned the right for what's going to transpire over these next few days and weeks. Uh, but my, my confidence is still strong that uh, we're going to have an opportunity for Kirk to be a Minnesota So 100% unequivocally you want him back? I do want him back. Nice uh, nice land there by Florio to really well drive that home. I mean, well, seriously. Well, it's but but – what what you guys don't realize, I, I think some people realize, Florio's like a diehard Vikings fan. Yes. yes. So there's the, the underlying thing is basically, because I don't. Like, I feel <laughs> like what he was saying is, is like, so unequivocally you want him back? Because I don't think the fans do or whatever. Like, whatever. I, I feel like there was, there's some there's definitely some bitterness there in uh, in Florio's question there. I think that's the right move for the Vikings. Oh, yeah, Absolutely. There's no one else better. There's Kirk no Cousins one else better. like a – MVP ballot type of level. Like he was playing like the fifth, sixth best quarterback yeah. in the league. Yes, he was. The playing the best level of his entire career. Just and you saw the drop off afterwards. It was an absolute catastrophe after the Josh Dobbs kind of renaissance ended. And I still don't know why they didn't start Josh Dobbs down the end of the season. He would have given them a better chance to win um, than Nick Mullins and Jaron Hall. But yeah, I think that the Nick Mullins and Jaron Hall experience kind of reminded uh, perhaps the Vikings what they were missing in Kirk Cousins. Yeah, and when you look at it, they don't have a top 10 pick. So you're not drafting a guy and just throwing him into the fire right away. It really is the best way. It's a bridge move, but a very good bridge. It's not but, a typical bridge But by player. the way, again, play it out. Like, like right uh, 
they don't have the draft capital likely to move to get May or Daniels or Williams, exactly. all right? So now you're like, it, now you're weighing, okay, Kirk Cousins or Bo Nix or J.J. McCarthy, right? Right, like you're, that's, you're, the, right that's, that's what that's, you're dealing with. Right. McCarthy Panic, needs McCarthy. to sit. Yes. So even if you love him, you need a quarterback right. for any of those teams thinking right. about taking it. And then you sit there and go, okay, well, who else, who could we get on free agency? Like, Kirk Cousins or Justin Fields? You'd rather Kirk Cousins. Right. You know, like familiarity. he's been in, he, familiarity. He's been in that system, right? You know, he's just better. He's well. just, yeah. right. right. He's better. At this, point in their, at this point in their career, 100%, he's better. Kirk Cousins versus Russell Wilson? You'd rather Kirk Cousins. Like, I mean, like, you know, you go down the list here and, like, who else are you getting? You know, so Kirk right. Cousins or Sam Howell, okay, that's a fair <laughs> argument. Sure. But future Hall of Famer Sam Howell. But other than that, I think uh, people forget this now, but with the way that Cousins was playing, with how uh, much Brian Flores' defense overachieved, like you could make a case that the Vikings could have been the second best team in the NFC last season behind the Niners if the Cousins was healthy. So I think, yeah, you just bring him back, you run it back, they'll have a good chance. The division is kind of sneakily loaded now where there's not really a weak team. I agree. Uh, it'll be the Bears with Caleb will be the weakest team in that division, and they still had an amazing defense. They're coming, they upside. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're, so they're right. coming. So loaded division, but, yeah, you need Kirk Cousins to go to war in that division. Yeah, I mean, by the way, and the Vikings defense at the beginning of the year, like they'd struggle. They, they were, it was taking them a while to figure out Flores' system, but by the second half of the year, like the defense right. was playing really well. They shut out the Raiders. You <laughs> score a point. Right, yeah. right, right. They shut out the Raiders, who then the next week put up 70 <laughs> exactly. or whatever, 64 or whatever it was. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, that's the right move. I think Kevin O'Connell's got the right thing. And my guess is that that gets done some way, somehow. It's like, logical for both sides. It is. You know, um, I know O'Connell and Cousins are close. Obviously, they they – they uh, they work together in Washington. Um, long list of coaches that were on the, the on on the Washington staff. You guys have quite the alumni. It's unbelievable. Uh, but you know they've they've spent time together. They're they're very close. Like you get to throw in a dome to Justin Jefferson and Jordan Addison, like and uh, T.J. Hawkinson. Eventually, like, Hawkinson. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, like it's a pretty good <laughs> list. Um, uh, there. One other thing I'll just say, as long as we're talking about um, O'Connell, real quickly. I asked him on the podium about how he, from the podium, I asked him, and I put this out on, on uh, X, Twitter, uh, his answer, but I asked him about the run game. Like, how did he view the running back room? He started with Ty Chandler. You can go see the whole answer on, on my, my, my Twitter feed at Matthew Barry TMR. But uh, in essence, he basically, he gave some lip service to Madison and some of the other guys. And, you know, you're always looking to improve, blah, blah, blah. But a lot of effusive talk about Ty Chandler. Like, the... The Vikings running back you're going to want next year is Ty Chandler. Yep. And it's the guy we feel like they should have rolled with a lot this year. Yeah. It took just, long enough. He right? talked about the fact that, like, he's been watching. He's going back. He's watching all the cut-ups and everything like that. And he just feels like Chandler in terms of the explosiveness, the, the you know, the, what he brought in the passing game. Like, just – he's, like, even things that don't even show up statistically, but just, you know, a key block here or something like that or fighting for an extra yard or, you know, just – anyway. He's a Ty Chandler fan. Speaking of running backs, a big talk of free agency is going to be Saquon Barkley. Giants GM Joe Shane uh, was asked about him and using the franchise tag. Shane said the salary cap changes your philosophy and how you're going to attack things. Obviously, a big talking point here, guys, is the cap went up much more than yeah, anyone yeah. expected. Shane also said, so that's not off the table. I don't think the Giants are going to franchise tag Saquon in the, uh, going into this year, Jay. No. But it is a reality now that there is more money to play with and that Saquon Barkley, no matter what you think of the running back position, is one of the most intriguing free agents on the market if he gets there. Yep. It's funny because Giants fans, and I now am in that community uh, with all my fellow you Giants are. fans cultivating yeah. friendships based on our love of the New York Giants. Like, no one wants him. No one really wants Saquon back. Right. Um, why are you giggling, Matthew? I just I think you're funny. <laughs> okay. Well, it just feels like everyone's ready to move on from Saquon and uh, yeah, I, talk I mean, to what is what's the buzz yeah. among all your new friends? What's the pulse yeah. of the fan base? <laughs> yeah, no, everyone uh, doesn't want Daniel Jones coming back. Oh, um, that's inevitable. They don't want kind of uh, indifferent to Saquon. I think the idea is is that I think people are still uh, in my community bitter about the fact that they didn't use the franchise tag on Daniel Jones last year and instead gave him the big contract and used it on Saquon. So it's almost like you're blaming Saquon for now what is a really bad contract for Daniel Jones. It's not really Saquon's fault for that, but yeah. I do get that you don't necessarily... Like the Giants, uh, my Giants, they're rebuilding at the moment effectively, and so to splash on a running back, it doesn't make a ton of sense, even if he is effectively the face of the franchise. Yeah. They didn't want to pay him last year yeah. when they thought they had a team, Yeah, right? right. A, a, a year ago this time, they're coming off of a a road playoff win against the Vikings. They think they've, you know, they've signed Daniel Jones to this big contract. They like they think they're 
you know, in the mix for the NFC East title. And obviously everything went south for them last year. Sorry, for you guys yes. last year. It was year. tough. Yeah, was yeah. Tough. To be fair, I only became a fan after the season, so I didn't feel the pain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah. I feel it retrospectively somewhat And we'll now. see if you make it to the season. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll, see if, we'll see. There's Someone else may catch your eye, <laughs> yeah. and you may jump uh, fan bases. But my point is, is last year at this time, in, a, in, a, in an offseason when it would have made sense to pay Saquon, they didn't want to. Yeah. And they eventually came to a you know 11th hour deal where they gave him a little bit more than the, the franchise tag and whatever, like kind of a saving face deal. But, like, yeah, they, they're in a rebuilding mode. And I think if they could get out of Daniel Jones' contract, I think they would, they would seriously consider it. But they can't. So I think barring a market where no one gives Saquon any kind of real deal and he has to sort of come back on a team-friendly deal or whatever, like Saquon Barkley, my guess, plays for another team next year. Yep. Any chance, Connor, uh, my J-men draft a quarterback? Chance, yes. Yeah. They are doing – all the legwork and beyond on them, I think two things. I think, one, they don't think they can get up from six into, you'd assume, three. Washington's yeah. not answering the phone for the Giants. The Bears are not trading the first overall pick again. I don't think they'd like anyone enough at six to just take the fourth guy. Yep. And the other thing is they desperately need a game-changing pass catcher. Darren Waller is a year older, injured. Yes, they like Jalen Hyatt, but they need a Malik Neighbors, yep. Brock Bowers, game-changing pass catcher in this offense. A great one is going to be there at six. Yep. So I'm thinking pass catcher for the Giants. One more note or two more notes on Saquon with the franchise tag. A second straight tag would be $12.1 million. And the other note is that's a hard number. Usually with cap numbers, you can you know alleviate some space or you can find what the franchise tag is a hard number you are stuck with. So the Giants want 12.1 on the books this year that they can't fluctuate at all for a running back that has been hurt a lot. I don't think it's going to be a tag situation and, for Saquon. And, and is candidly a luxury for a team that's rebuilding. Right. Yep. So No, yeah. This is get ready to draft Gary Brightwell. <laughs> okay, there we go. Mallory. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But like, <laughs> it's gonna be some. It's gonna be something like that. It's you know what I mean. Like he, I, I don't know. Yeah. You know, I feel like the starting running back for the Giants probably isn't on their roster right now. Feels like there aren't many teams in a more grim spot than the Giants heading into this season, um, which is a great time for me to jump on the bed. <laughs> yeah, interesting choice. <laughs> yeah, well, I want to get on a low point. What am I going to be? To be a Chiefs fan? <laughs> yeah. Go for the third? No. Go buying in plenty, low on the Giants. Plenty of room over here at the Commanders. <laughs> no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> no, Come on over. Water's no, warm. I can't do that. No, I need to be against you, not with you. That's part <laughs> of the shtick. Yeah, that's that is that is fair. Although you'd be better off, you know, joining the Cowboys or the Eagles or a team that I'm worried about. Yeah, yeah no, that's fair. Pivoting to a more successful team, the Kansas City Chiefs. Matthew, you got to talk to Andy Reid I earlier did. in the week on a lot of things about Kelsey's snap count. Um, so take a listen to Matthew's conversation with Coach Reid. I'm here with back-to-back -back Super Bowl champion winning head coach Andy Reid. Coach, uh, over, the, over the second half of the season, Isaiah Pacheco was used a lot more in the passing game. Was that a result because McKinnon was hurt or just a piece of his game that you thought gave you more versatility? Yeah, well... Maybe a little bit of each, yeah. um, but we're lucky in that in that room to have some good good guys, and they can they can catch the ball, can play, can run the ball well. Uh, so I, I'd probably tell you yes, um, but uh, we like throwing to them anyways. <laughs> right? Yeah, sure. Yeah. The ball in his hand is usually a ball, pretty good ball thing. Ball is a good thing. Yeah. Last year was uh, sort of the the lowest snaps played for Kelsey's career towards the end of the regular season seemed like you guys were sort of saying, was that by design to try to like save him for the, for the playoffs? Was that, was that a design? And I know he's already said he's coming back. So curious as to his plans for your plans with him next year. Seth. Yeah. Well, you can see that he's hard to keep out of a game. So that, that was like a major coaching accomplishment <laughs> for me. Uh, although in the Super Bowl, he, he got mad, but that the fact that he loves to play, and that we have to do that, I think, is important. And the older you get, hey, you, you've got to do that. It, we want them to last a while. Yeah. And, um, and so it's important that we handle that the right way. Even though he might not like it, uh, I, I think it's for the better for him. Appreciate it. One last quick one. Talk to me about the development of Rasheed Rice over the course of the year. And can he be the, you know, we've been looking for the heir apparent to Tyreek Hill, obviously a different player, but the number one wide receiver for Patrick. Yeah, first of all, Tyreek was phenomenal, yeah. um, outside or inside. Rasheed was a guy that Kelsey needed. So <clears throat> you need that guy that can work inside the numbers there. Um, that's quarterback-friendly yeah. area. And where they just can't double Kels. So um, the growth of Rasheed was a big part of our turnaround uh, offensively. And helping and, Kelsey free up. That's right. 
Absolutely, yeah. And they, they, you want to make sure they can kind of do similar things. But Kelsey's so good playing in space. Rasheed was good at that at the college level, but it, it's tough in the National Football League. Those windows are so small, and then you got to kind of know when he looks back, this linebacker looks back, or safety nickel looks back at the quarterback, where is he going to go? How is he going to feel me? Where, where is he? How can I show my color to the quarterback? And, uh, and that's where he developed the most, and it, it complimented Kels. So you feel like a full-time role for Rasheed, like every snap next year, well, or he played, almost every. Yeah, he did towards he the did, end. He did. Yeah, he played outside too. He had some big plays actually outside for us. So um, he can do both. Uh, but we really that his biggest development took place inside there in that dirty zone where he's, you got to work all that. And then he watched Kells, and so ca catching the ball, keeping your hands available, catching the ball, and getting upfield, he did a great job with. And that that's something that he learned from Kells in that area, and it, it was great. I mean, that's, that'll help him the rest of his career. Andy Reid, you're going for a three-peat. Best of luck, my friend. Uh, Thanks I appreciate so much for the you, time. Man. Thank you. Appreciate yes. you, Coach. You really dress up for Coach Reid. It's interesting, yeah. like, th seeing you on this? this desk and then seeing you yeah. broadcasting yeah, well, with a head coach. He's a two-time Super Bowl champion, and you guys are a giant guys that barely made, the playoffs the and, yeah. barely, barely made the playoffs in our fantasy league. <laughs> I'm actually annoyed because I, I didn't know if we were going to get Coach Reed because he's so in demand, obviously, and everyone wants him. But, like, luckily he was able to make some time for us. But I'm so mad at myself because what I should have done, I said, Coach, you know, you just won the Super Bowl. I actually won the Fantasy Football Happy Hour Fantasy League, so champion to champion. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wish I had done that. Oh, he would have loved it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can't, can't do do-overs. I will yeah. say, like, to, to be fair, like, a lot of coaches don't give a lot of color in their answers. Yeah, they right. just kind of, obviously, coach speak is more bland. Reed does give a yes. ton of yes. detail in his answers, and I always look forward to, uh, it, well, it seems like they win the Super Bowl every year now, so we sit down with Peter King after they yep. win the Super Bowl and going into the plays and all of that. The detail he's giving you about how Rasheed Rice freed up Travis Kelsey. Um, it was really excellent. And I still can't believe the Chiefs won the Super Bowl. They were so bad <laughs> in the second That's half amazing. of the season. It's unbelievable. Right, you know, who, who can believe the Chiefs won the Super Bowl? Oh, yes. Me and Connor. Yes. Right. Because we, we picked we, them to win the game. We picked them to win the yeah. game. We yeah. put our money on it. <laughs> and unlike you, we actually won money on the Super Bowl. <laughs> Uh, so that worked out well for Connor and myself. We'd never doubted Coach Reed. But I agree with you. Like, he was great. Like, yeah. he was – I thought that answer on Rasheed Rice especially and also just the – you know, the, the fact of the matter is that the Pacheco passing game usage was somewhat because he can do it but also, ne you know, necess necessitated by the lack of having Jarek McKinnon yep. available to him. So that was interesting. And, yes, we should – lower expectations for the snap count of Travis Kelsey in the, tri the regular season next year. Staying in the division, ESPN's Adam Schefter reports the Chargers are expected to let Austin Eckler test for agency. Matthew, I don't think after our conversation with Eckler at Super Bowl, this is not a surprise to me. No. He was very open to potentially having, you know, a new destination while not totally closing the door. You chatted with Chargers' new GM, Joe Hortiz, yesterday yep. and got to ask him directly about that. So take a listen on I Eckler did. from Hortiz. I'm here with new Chargers general manager, Joe Hortiz. And Joe, a lot of fascinating offseason for the Chargers, obviously, starting with your hiring. But um, is it fair to say with the hiring of Jim Harbaugh and Greg Roman, the running back position and running the running game of the Chargers is going to be very important this year? Uh, yeah, I'd say that's fair to say. Um, you know, but honestly, I think it's pretty, pretty important in a, with a lot of teams. It really is. A, you know, I think it's a, a mindset and mentality in a philosophical way. But you know, you control the game by running the ball, and it opens up your passing game. I mean, teams have to commit to stopping the run, adds bodies into the box, and all of a sudden your quarterback's gashing them for big chunks, and so you build so much off of it. Um, but, yeah, there's a mentality uh, that, that the running game establishes, and that's what we're all about. The Chargers have one of the best in the NFL in Austin Eckler. He's a free agent. Curious, I know there's not much you can say, but I was just curious kind of how you assessed Eckler and have you had a chance to talk with Austin and with Coach Harbaugh about how he may or may not fit into your plans next year? Yeah, those are conversations that really are still ongoing. Um, you know, coaches are evaluating players on our team. We just finished hiring our coaching staff this week, uh, this past week. So um, we're still going through meetings, discussions, and we'll continue that through the combine, meet with his representation. Uh, but certainly Austin's a, just a great story. You know, coming out of nowhere from Western Colorado and putting together a phenomenal career thus far, and, and he's a free agent and there's going to be interest in him. So one of those things where you got to see, let the process play out. Uh, certainly, you know, I have a tremendous amount of respect for him as a person and, and really him as a player, what he's done. 
It's good to see the pipeline of uh, bald NFL GMs coming out of Baltimore. Joe Douglas, <laughs> yeah. Joe Ortiz. Listen. Powerhouse, that tree. Listen, you're not going to have me say anything bad about bald men. No. For the love of They're God. Great. I love it. They are. They're yeah. awesome. You know, more power to the, the bald and balding. I like to feel like I'm ing. I've got an ing hair. there. I've, yeah, yeah, I have I've some so hair. I've witnessed you get a haircut at yes. NBC. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. It's, yes. I love Full NBC. It. You, you yeah. really do. You I come really in there do. and they just bring yeah. you back to life. <laughs> they really they do. piece you back together. Yeah, they're, they're the best. Like yeah. 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 Exactly. Something like that. Yeah. At the mountain in Game of Thrones. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. God bless the peacock. So, anyway, um, what I was going to say about that is, but if you sort of read between the lines and just our conversations with Austin Eckler as well, so definitive Joe Hortiz interview, the definitive Austin Eckler interview that we we did, feels like yeah, like you know he just said there's going to be a lot of interest in him. He didn't say, like, from us as well. <laughs> like right, he, right, right. And I also, Connor, I'm curious to you. <laughs> great as somebody, story. Right. I mean, no, great story. Like, said all the right things. And I, I don't think it's out of the question of him coming back to the Chargers if after free agency goes through and, like, you know, that. but I think that it's unlikely the deal he's going to want, that Austin Eckler's going to want, is going to be with the Chargers. I also, this is a question for you, Connor, in terms of as you've watched Harbaugh offenses and, and Greg Roman offenses, doesn't feel like Eckler is the kind of running back they build around. No, it does not. And I think Austin understands that himself. I remember correctly talking from the Super Bowl, just what that scheme is going to ask you to do, how downhill it's going to be, how run heavy it is. The best aspect of Austin Eckler's game is his ability as a pass catcher. So while we could sit here and say, hey, the Chargers probably are going to look elsewhere, I think Austin Eckler would like to look elsewhere. And this is his one shot to cash in and it's funny yeah. to me the two names we're going to talk about next that are officially not getting franchise tag josh jacobs and derrick henry they are better fits for what jim harbaugh's chargers gonna are going to be than austin eckler staying yeah so. i would agree with that yep it is i mean and not sneakily it just it's this is the most loaded running back free agency class i can remember between uh tony pollard and saquon and derrick henry and jacobs and austin eckler right and it feels it's kind of depressing in a way that it just doesn't feel like it's a big deal in a way because the it feels like running backs are, are more interchangeable now. Obviously, they have their own strengths. I think that a lot of these guys are going to get better than what they showed the previous year. Like, we forget, like, we're a year removed from Josh Jacobs winning the rushing title. Derrick Henry is still a monster. He just has no offensive line. Eckler was banged up all last season. Tony Pollard, people forget as well, he broke his leg uh, and was coming back from that. Uh, so I think these guys... And Saquon is Saquon. And Saquon is... Yeah, and Saquon was fine this yeah. year. It's just the team was a mess. So I think these guys will live. It certainly seems... The, but uh, the problem is, the, the challenge is, right, is that if you're on the other side, if you're, if you're Joe Hortiz or whoever, and you sit there and say, listen, Josh Jacobs, I get it. You won the rushing title. You know, you're awesome. But by the way... You went down at the end of the year. The Raiders were terrible. Aiden O'Connell's behind center, like it's you know, and yet Zamir White put up similar numbers, like fourth round. I think Zamir White was like a yeah, fourth round a day pick, three right? Pick, yes. it, so like, my point is, is like that's their argument. Is is like, if I'm the Raiders and I was able to get the same production out of Zamir White as I did Josh Jacobs, why am I going to pay a Josh Jacobs when I'm better off just going to the draft and picking a guy in the third or fourth round, right. or waiting for the bigger names to get, yep. you know, picked off. And then, you, you 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 know, listen, Tajay Spears was just in – Derrick Henry is awesome and one of the best running backs since he's been in the league. But Tajay Spears, again, behind a bad Titans offensive line, was in many ways – more dynamic than Derrick Henry last year. Yep. The worst thing possible for all of these guys, honestly, is Kyron Williams and the fact that that guy can yeah. come out of nowhere and now might be RB2 uh, going into next season behind McCaffrey. I think that is in play. Uh, and also, like, with, with these guys and with some of the ages that they're getting to, like, do we know definitively that Josh Jacobs next year is going to be a better running back than Ty Chandler? Like, I right. don't know. No, exactly. And you think about, I mean, just, I mean, I think, that, like, people were surprised when the Vikings didn't want to pay Dalvin Cook. And then he goes to the Jets. And it was over. It was over. It was right. clearly over. They knew when to move on. Yeah. These and then, teams know when to move on. And the Ravens signed him for the stretch run, and, like, they barely used him. No. Like, you know, and the, the Ravens could have used him. And so you just sort of – by the way, it also just goes to show, like, what a crazy career Latavius Murray has had. Yeah. Who's still getting, like, you know <laughs> – He'll like, be 35. I mean, still, just still, like, he was scoring touchdowns for the Bills the tackles, last year. Right. Like, but you almost wonder if it's benefited him that he's never been that guy that he's always been the number two or three, that his body, and he's met, Latavius Murray's like 230 pounds, yeah. that he's held up every yeah. year. Where right. these guys get and run to the ground and it's over. And right. and we, I mean, like, are you shocked about, like, I mean, to get into a whole running back discussion, but, like, I just think about this, like, like that Leonard Fournette 
like barely got a sniff last year. No. A, a year after having a great year for the Buccaneers, right. and then That's nothing. It. And yep. then nothing. And like he was on the Bills practice squad. He played like a game or two, but right. like you know, basically like a. Ty cup Johnson of got play over him. Yes. For the Bills, the Bills were like, "No, we have our guys. Fournette, we're going to let him go." To me, the most interesting guy, and this is a little maybe weird to say, but to me, the most interesting guy of all these players is Derrick Henry because Henry had no offensive line whatsoever on the Titans last year. Like it was a mess. Right. They might have had the worst offensive line in football. He still showed flashes, and by the advanced stuff like his PFF grade, like Derrick Henry was still awesome. And for as much as he yeah, had running backs, you know, what Aaron Schatz and football outsiders had like the rule of 370. If you get like 370 carries, you go over that, you just don't yeah. come back. Derrick Henry has broken all those rules his right. career. He came back from a broken foot, uh, and then the next year was just dominant again. So Derrick Henry might just break all the rules of science. In the same and, season. Like, didn't he, like, he, he came like, back to like, the playoffs. Yeah. Playoff. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing is, is that, yeah, I mean, like, you think about, especially if Derrick Henry is able to get to a situation where he doesn't have to carry the ball 20. Like, Think about Derrick Henry on Baltimore. Yeah, and the Gus Edwards Dallas, well. it was right? Derrick exactly. Henry. Yeah. But it's Derrick Henry, yeah. right? I mean, like suddenly, you know, he becomes very efficient. But yeah, it is. I feel bad for these running backs. We we like them and everything, and their running back is important, and they should be paid. But it's also like I get it from the, you know, right? Kyron Williams, Ty Chandler, Zamir White. You know, these guys that Isaiah Pacheco just won the Super Bowl. He was a seventh round pick. Right. And this year, we might not have a running back go in the first two rounds, but then 12 are going to go in the third and fourth rounds. Right. So deciphering it this year is, is going to be absolutely fascinating. More veteran free agent news. Mike Evans, uh, per ESPN's Jenna Lane, she reports the Buccaneers are moving towards re-signing Mike Evans. We know they've been talking for a long time. It feels like they were far apart for a long time. But it's hard to imagine Mike Evans not being a Tampa Bay Buccaneer for life. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think um, I saw uh, Jason Lick, the uh, – Light, right? How do yep, I pronounce light. it? Jason Light. 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 Yep. Sorry. Jason Light, the, the general manager of the Buccaneers, he was on Pro Football Talk, and he was talking a little bit about that. We'd like Mike Evans yeah. back. Dave Canales, I was at his press conference, same saying, you know, they'd like, you know, listen, there's all the coach, coach speak, there's a process, you know, he's going to test the market. We have to, you know, make sense. But, yes, given how much he's meant to that franchise, that city, um, that team, and the fact that now there's a big salary cap, and also, by the way, T. Higgins is off the board. So in terms of, like, how are you going to – like, the Buccaneers – the Buccaneers are not in rebuilding mode. The Buccaneers won a playoff game this past year. I mean, right. the Buccaneers, you know, were within a touchdown of going to the NFC Championship. So uh, I think, you know, they want to they want to bring Baker Mayfield back and they want to bring Mike Evans back. And especially when you think about the, the increased salary cap, like, I think a deal gets done there. Yeah, it yep. just feels like it makes sense for both sides. I think as good as Baker was this year, also he's not the guy where you want to remove that type of safety blanket for him because if he doesn't oh, have no. Mike Evans, it's not going to look nearly the same. The Bengals have informed T. Higgins they're going to franchise tag him, and per Charlie Goldsmith of the Inquirer, reports are that the Bengals have no plans to trade him, Matthew. So that would have been a massive free agent uh, at the position. I mean, you're talking 20 mil per year or more for T. Higgins, but at least for one more year he's going to stay in Cincinnati split the targets with Jamar Chase from a great quarterback in Joe Burrow. Yeah, I mean, I think this makes a ton of sense. It'll be interesting to see what happens with uh, Joe Mixon there. Down year for T. Higgins there, as you see it there on your screen, just, you know, under 700 yards, five touchdowns. He was hurt under 45 receptions for the year. Not a typical T. Higgins year, but they know what they have in him talent-wise. And so, look, they're in a window right now. They have a window, and so I think it makes sense to – by franchise tagging him, you sort of kick the can down the road because they know they're going to have to extend Jamar Chase. That They've one's got getting some, done. They, they have big contracts coming up. So a one-year deal, which great, but it's just, it's just one year for Higgins, and you take another shot at it. Let's see what happens with a fully healthy Joe Burrow, Chase, and Higgins. Be interesting to see if uh, Tyler Boyd is back. I don't I think, think that's, no. I don't think so. Yeah, you got to make a decision somewhere. Be, yeah. Uh, your man, Yosevis, right? Yosevis. Yeah, Yosevis will be the stretch guy yep. eventually. So, and then, you know, Trent Irwin will hang around yeah, somewhere. Yeah, of course. But in all seriousness, guys, <laughs> in this salary cap era, and the cap exploded, but you pay Joe Burrow as a top five quarterback. Yeah. You're going to pay Jamar Chase as the highest paid wide receiver in the league very soon. And then T. Higgins, understandably, does not want to be paid as a number two. He wants yeah. to be paid as a number one. So you're right, Matthew. Because like most teams, he is a number one. 100%. So it's a great way to build a team. Cincinnati's offense is awesome to watch, but they have to delay the inevitable. I don't know if they ever can get an extension done with Higgins knowing Chase is knocking on that door soon, too. Yeah, but, but the other thing is, is like, Connor, you've talked about this a lot. Like, 
Do you, you kick the can down the road for a year? Yeah, buy your window. I, and by the way, this is a very deep wide receiver class, right? The draft. So do you think the Cincinnati Bengals are in the market for, you know, in the did they take a wide receiver in the first two days, you think? I Did think you see so. that? I think first two days makes a ton of sense because Jonah Williams is going to probably leave him for agency, their right tackle. So maybe you look to get your right tackle in the first round. But this draft is great on day two at wide receiver. So where did they draft T. Higgins? Day yeah. two. Yeah. He wasn't a first round pick. So yeah, I think they have a system in place that they feel like you can't replace Jamar Chase. You can't replace Jam- uh, Joe Burrow. It'll be really hard to replace T. Higgins, but theoretically, y- you could do it yeah. in the draft. Yep. I think for the concerns about T and his performance this season, I think this Bengals season, you just got to throw it in the bin. Like, you throw it in the bin and move on because Burrow was himself for, like, three weeks of right. the whole season. And outside of that, and also, like, I wouldn't be that worried about Joe Burrow's health. Like, he did a calf, and then he had the wrist thumb thing, and so that's not indicative of future injuries, I don't think. So I think they will be fine, and they'll be back to the – the yeah the dominant offensive force you'd expect all right sports illustrated's john shipley does a great job covering the jacksonville jaguars he believes the uh the team wants calvin ridley back for 2024 matthew you got to chat with doug peterson yesterday i did talking ridley talking jacksonville's playmakers let's take a listen to that conversation all right i'm here with doug peterson head coach of the jacksonville jaguars coach you know, it's interesting, uh, when you were a head coach in Philadelphia and then early in career in, in Jacksonville, you're a guy that's always liked to use multiple running backs. But last year, Travis Etienne, 325 touches, third most in the NFL. Is that something we can continue to expect? Was that a result of just he was getting it done or the only guy you had? Talk to me about next I, year. I, I think it's a little bit of everything. Um, he was getting it done. Um, you know, uh, Dearness Johnson got, got hurt a little bit in there. And then, and then Tank. Um, it was a rookie and, and learning and coming on who we really like tank and, and he'll have a bigger impact this year for us. Um, it's not the recipe necessarily to put Travis in that situation. So I, I would, I would consider, um, you know, knocking a few of those reps down to keep him healthy throughout the course of the year. Uh, question for you in terms of, uh, your passing offense here, Trevor had some ups, some downs. How do you evaluate Trevor's season last year? I think he had a good season, not a great season. Um, you know, obviously, the, the, the number one concern for us is the turnovers, right? we got to make sure that we correct that and make sure that he takes care of the football. And, and uh, we were a pretty decent, you know, top 10 passing offense uh, in the National Football League. So, you know, that's something to say for, for Trevor and, and um, you know, the skill guys around him with Evan and Christian and Zay. And, and we didn't have Christian and Zay late in the yeah. season, right? Calvin was the only guy. So um, we got to continue to improve there. One area, obviously, we got to get get better is the run game. The run game will help us, you know, in the passing game because everything goes hand in hand, and, and that's something that um, uh, will be uh, sort of a um, kind of the impact for this off season as we as we put our pieces together. You mentioned you mentioned uh, you mentioned Zay and Christian specifically in terms of you didn't have them. Zay was in and out of the lineup quite a bit last year, and it felt like you know when Zay was out, you'd move Christian outside some, and sometimes you'd obviously try to use him in the slot. Where's your in an ideal world? Where's Christian Kirk playing for you? I know he can play all all three spots. Yeah, but he can he can play all three, but ideally he's in the slot. Yeah. I, th- I think that's his best position. I think that's the matchup that we like uh, in there. I think Zay and Calvin on the outside, you know, present uh, present the matchups there as well. But you know, Christian can go outside but it's not his strength and and um, um, again when Zay was out we moved him out there um, you know and then and then Parker Washington Jamal uh, Agnew yep. you know had, had impacts in the in, in our season so um, you know the, the goal is to keep everybody healthy and keep them in the right spots and then continue to improve the bottom part of your roster what's uh, I know you have to deal with all the contracts and everything is the hope that Calvin's back next year we would like to, you know, um, you know, we're, we're early in the process right now and, and we'd love to get him back, you know, and he, he was such a dynamic guy for us. And, and so we're working, working, uh, you know, uh, to try to make that possible. Last question for me here, coach. Um, Evan Ingram, who had a, an up and down career in New York, seems to have exploded in Jacksonville. Just talk to me a little bit about Evan and the importance he has in your offense. Well, when I was in Philly, I went against Evan, you know, quite a bit in New York, and and uh, really loved his skill set, and, and and somebody that kind of reminds me a lot of like Zach Ertz when they had Zach, and of course Dallas Goddard, and uh, now in Philadelphia, and um, he he just brings another matchup issue for us, you know, from an offensive perspective, and and um, uh, he has a great comfort level with our quarterback and Trevor, and and can put him anywhere on the field. You can put him outside, you can put him inside, in line as a tight end. He's physical enough to, to, to hold up at the point of attack and blocking. And, and just, 
again, another one of the weapons that, that we try to, I know we do, we, we game plan for him every single week and, and, um, and, and let him do his thing. So we're excited to have a guy like Evan on our roster. Well, it's been a lot of fun watching the Jaguars since you got to town. Continued success to you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Thank you. Very honest, Doug Peterson. Yeah. I really like the great. Trevor Lawrence no. answer because we're yeah. all seeing it. Trevor Lawrence has not been a bust. He's been fine. But we expect him to be great. We and do expect he, him to be great. clearly his coach expects him to take that leap as well. I thought that was, I mean, I, by the way, I completely honest and I agree with the assessment. Yep. Trevor Lawrence had a good year, but not yeah, a great year. Not a great year. Not a great year. And for a guy that was the number one overall pick and, like, the best quarterback prospect since Andrew Luck, you expect great. Yep. This is a massive year for the Jags because you go into last season, I think they opened the season, like, minus 160 to win the division. Right. Uh, and then, uh, you know, they blow it on the last day of the season. They were in position with, like, five weeks left in the season. They had the one seed in their control, and they missed the playoffs entirely. And now Lawrence, I mean, this is a huge year for him. I think with Lawrence, it's a bit difficult because he was so banged up last year between the shoulder and the concussions. This is and their offensive year. line was beat up, too. Was, yes. Everything was just a mess with the team. I don't know what their defense was doing against the Titans in that last yeah. game where all of a sudden... The the Titans could block for the first time all season. Um, but this is a big year for Doug Peterson as well, because that was a really disappointing season. But I still trust in the talent that made them such a big favorite last year. And, and Lawrence just surely will be better. It's the other interesting answer there, I thought, was, you know, asked him when the first question when I asked him about ETN, you know, and he just basically said, you know, I'd prefer not to do that. But he, as he's going through, Dearness Johnson got hurt. And then he, in the nicest way possible, said Tank Bigsby was just bad last year. Yeah. Hey, he's a rookie. He's learning. You know, he like in the we night, couldn't use him. We couldn't use him in essence, basically. Now he did say he'll have a bigger role this year, so that they still like Tank. I don't know how much that was coach speak right. versus Tank Bigsby will have a a bigger role. But I know early on we were like, hey, Tank Bigsby sleeper, and then we we're like, yeah, never mind. They're not <laughs> going to play him. Yeah, yeah. He couldn't get on the field, and Etn was great. Yeah, Etn was great last year. So. Uh, I agree with you. I think it's a fascinating thing. And that division all of a sudden has gotten really interesting because obviously Houston has come on in a yep. huge way and C.J. Stroud. You think the Colts, the Colts who were right in it, you know, with Gardner Minshew, assuming That's a full year of thing. health with Anthony Richardson. I think Shane Steichen's done a great job. You love the stick man. I love the stick man. Stick man might be my favorite coach. <laughs> and it's, it's, I mean, it's such a shame that his job won't get um, the credit that it deserved this past season because Tyler Goodson dropped a fourth and one pass. Right. Like yeah. Tyler Goodson catches that pass, they literally win the division. It's the right call. They win yeah. the division and have a home playoff game. And who knows? They may well have beaten Joe Flacco. They could have won a playoff game. So yeah. just that one moment just colors everything. But Slacken was incredible. I think he actually might have done the best coaching job of anyone last season, even though they didn't make the playoffs. Gardner Minshew and that team had no right to be in one play from winning the division. Yeah. Anyway, so, but all of a sudden that, right? Colts, Jags, Texans, and we figure the Titans will get better, like, you know, full year of Will Levis. Yeah, and, top yeah, 10 pick yeah. again. I mean, they're going to get better. Yeah. So it's suddenly, it's a it's a much more interesting division than it was a year ago. Yep. And, uh, and, and a much more competitive one. Yep. And the Texans will be the favorite to win yeah. that division, uh, just because CJ Stroud is that good. One last interview from yesterday, Matthew. Uh, we had to get this one in because it is presented without bias. It is, there's no favoritism. Done. Just a squeaky clean, honest interview with Super Washington <laughs> Commanders new head coach Dan Quinn. Check it out. This is very objective. You'll all right. So I'm just gonna own this right now. This is not an objective interview. Hail the Commanders, <laughs> hail victory. You guys all know, massive fan my entire life. Here with new head coach of the Commanders, Dan Quinn. I'm excited, Dan, and I'd like to just formally apologize to you for all the times I yelled at you when your <laughs> Cowboys defense was kicking our ass over the last couple of years. And so uh, well, I'm happy to have this? you on it's our side. It's good to side. join forces, man. Yes, there yeah. you go. I'm happy to have you on our side now. Um, I, I want to talk a little bit about uh, your time in Atlanta. When you were in Atlanta, yep. Kyle Shanahan, Dirk Cutter, you had some great offensive yes. coordinators for you. Um, talk to me about what's important in an offense coordinator and why Cliff. Yeah, I uh, absolutely had a blast there, and I learned a lot. Sometimes as a defensive coach, you're just in those meeting rooms all the time, and so when you first become a head coach, you kind of expand your lens, and now you're into – you know, more special teams meetings and some offensive ones and it, you hear other coaches teach and the ways that you go through that. You'd be surprised, like yeah. your own, you know, the meetings are going out at the same time. So as a defensive coach, you're not into the offensive meetings. And so um, it was really enlightening to see um, a guy like Kyle had real command in both the run game and the passing game, uh, finding ways to make explosive plays, uh, being physical, like those were the things that I learned from them uh, about what it takes to do that and uh, I'd say all the way back to when I first came into the NFL Bill Walsh was just then retiring as the GM he had done some consultant but 
extension and connection were like two words that he said a lot, meaning like we are extension of one yeah. another. It's the pass blocking to throw to Jerry Rice. It was that part of working together. And I think the best of the best offenses have runs and play passes that look alike. They're explosive. Um, obviously, the quarterback plays the driving force of it. But um, what I hope you'd see when you watch us play is, man, these guys are explosive and they are physical. And so those are things that I want to be part of our offense at the highest level. Uh, I'm curious uh, in terms of you obviously as the defense coordinator of the Cowboys for the last couple of years, you've you've had to scout Washington last couple of years. So I'm just curious when you scouted Washington, both as a defensive coordinator for the Cowboys and then in taking this opportunity, what did you see on the roster in terms of where are their holes and where do you think there's some strengths? Well, I thought one, the, the strengths, I thought these are that's a receiving core that can generate explosive plays. And so I saw a running back, you know, that was physical and dynamic to do things to go and Brian and Antonio. So like Brian's toughness is and size is what we look for in that position. Yeah. And so like it helps close the identity on a team when you can really run and go finish games. Brian Robinson is that type of back where he can go and say, I'm going to go finish this game. It's four minute. And you're not getting it back. Yeah. And so that's the type of player and attitude that I want to be about. Russell Wilson in Seattle, Matt Ryan in Atlanta, Dak Prescott in Dallas. You've you've had the fortune to be a coach with some great quarterbacks over yep. the last however many years that is. Um, talk to me about, they're obviously three different quarterbacks, but the traits that they have that you're looking for, whether it's internally or externally, for the court, next quarterback of the well, Washington Commanders, for you, one, I should say. Yeah, I would say at that position, you better be tough because mentally and physically tough. There has to be times you know you're going to get hit, but you still have to deliver the ball to the right spot at the right time and the right location. You have to be able to you know, have some accuracy on the deep balls. When the moment comes, there's an all-out blitz that you can go deliver on that. Um, I think you have to be able to get out of bad plays. You're into your regular drop back. The right tackle got beat. How do you avoid that and still not take a sack and make a play and be able to speed up when things, okay, a blitz happened, I got to get rid of the ball and not you know, allow those bad plays to happen. So there's a lot of things that go into it. It's not just accuracy. It's not just arm strength. It's the ability to get out of bad plays. I'm not talking about checks at the line of scrimmage. I'm talking about yeah. something that was unforeseen and how do you not allow those things to happen. And so all those things, guys, like you said, like Russ and Matt and Dak, they had that trait to say, hey, they were tough as hell. You know, I saw them play through pain and, and getting hit and coming back up, you know, again. I saw them get out of bad plays. I saw them have to speed it up, you know, when, when things had to get off course. And so those are some of the traits that they don't necessarily show up on a stat sheet. You're not going to find them in next-gen stats. But you are the intangibles at that position that you have to find. Sometimes a throwaway for a QB is a really good play. Yeah, you know, for sure. A second down that didn't turn into second and 17, and you got to play another down. And so those are things that you look for, and they're hard to find, and you got to study it and go through it. All right, the definitive, exclusive sit-down, Dan, Dan Quinn. Completely objective, hard-hitting. The great yes. hope for the Washington yes. Commanders. As I said before we got on, shades of Frost Nixon. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all of the tough questions being asked. Well, I, uh, I, what was, I what was missed there, my, the, the follow-up yes. there is I literally asked him, I said, well, you know who's tough and extends plays at quarterback? Sam Howell. Yeah. yeah. By the way, which he agreed with. Sure. By the way. He'll stick around, right? He'll be the backup. I think that's what I said. I said, I think, you know, a guy like that has value to the team, which he agrees with. Just get rid of him. I, I mean, like, sense. he's on a rookie deal. He's on yeah, a cheap yeah. rookie deal. Yep. I will say there's an argument you made. Like, I wonder what the trade market would be for Sam Howell, given how quarterback needy it is. I, and the only way I do that is if you can re-sign Jacoby Brissett. Right. Like, like, assuming you draft Williams, May, Daniels, one of those three guys, and then having, if you had Jacoby Brissett as a veteran backup to whoever that rookie guy was, Howell has... Howell should be a starting quarterback in the NFL. Yep. He is not. There are not 32 quarterbacks better than Sam Howell. Yep. That would be my argument. Yep. I don't think Jacoby Brissett's going to be back. Just, just kind of gut feel from what I've heard. Go somewhere where he's a better shot to play. I think better shot to play. Also, where he can just impact winning more for a team that's ready for the playoffs. Like you know, this was talked about ad nauseum. But if he was on the Browns or the Jets or teams right. like that, like they really could have used him. Uh, the Vikings. The Vikings sure. made the playoffs with Jacoby Brissett. Right. So. Uh, I just don't think he makes that much sense on the team unless they, unless they, I guess, move on from Hal and trade him and then have Jeremy Brissett as the, uh, the mentor for uh, whoever your quarterback's going to be, Matt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree, but they may not want to pay. Like, 
Jacoby Brissett will have a nice market again. Really like, nice. This past season, whether it was right to your point, the Jets, the Vikings, like you know, a number of teams, you you sort of saw like, oh boy, and the Browns got lucky with Flacco. But the truth is, is that there were so many teams that just desperately needed like a quality backup quarterback, yeah. and they didn't have it. And so I think somebody will be one of those teams that is Super Bowl ready, or you know, will pay him like. Why wouldn't the Jets? I think they're going to. Right. Or at least I think they're going to make an effort yep. to try to get Whether him for it's $10 million a year. Or somebody, right, yes. somebody like that. It's the same thing as last year. Like, philosophically, he just makes no sense on this team unless his veteran leadership adds such a value because, right. Right. okay, well, he's not going to play. If he does play, you'd rather them not win the games, but he's right. too good that he's probably going to help them win some games. So there's just no point to him really being there. Yep. I right. Yeah. I, th- I, I would agree with you. I like Jacoby Brissett, but I, he, he makes more sense on another team. Yep. The battle for Manchester is streaming live on Peacock. Man City is on the hunt for their fourth straight Premier League title, and their crosstown rivals would love to play spoiler. Watch Man City versus Man United live Sunday, March 3rd at 10 a.m. Eastern, only on Peacock. On Man City, Connor, just quickly, um, as we were stuck Please. at LaGuardia Airport yesterday um, for an ungodly amount of hours, as uh, as I was telling producer Stephen before, apparently we can put men on the moon, but we can't put fog lights on planes. Uh, and we just were completely <laughs> stuck because of the fact. fog in New York. But I had a bet uh, on Luton Town in the FA Cup against Man City. I uh, opened the uh, flash score up to check what the score is. Um, and Erling Haaland for Man City had scored five goals in less than an hour. Uh, and it was 5-2. Uh, it that was, that was a quick death for that one. So, uh, yeah. So did not, did to, not uh, cash. Yes, no, that, that so, was a So there you go. Up. Just in case you were wondering, while Jay was delayed <laughs> in his plane, he was also losing money. Yes. So it was a good day to be losing Jay. Time, losing time, losing money. It's the American, losing it's money. American dream. Yeah, it's American exactly. Dream. And money. he's a Giants fan. Yes. Right. So <laughs> Things are going well. They crash your household. Erling Haaland might be the best quarterback on the Giants uh, next <laughs> season. Yeah. I, um, one thing I will say, though, real quickly about LaGuardia, I feel like there's always delays at LaGuardia. Lagu- I, They're doing something wrong. I. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you quickly, the worst, the worst flight experience I've ever had in my life is at LaGuardia, and I, I will be kind and not mention the, the airline, okay? Ours was Delta. <laughs> Mine also. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, LaGuardia is a, is a Delta hub. Yes. But it, so here's what happened. We, my, so we, we drive there. We, I'm going to do this real quickly. We drive there from Connecticut. We get to the parking lot, the park, the, you know, whatever, for whatever, whatever we were, like, in you know, Terminal C, whatever, the parking lot for Terminal C, completely filled. So, like, oh, you just have to go to, you have to go to Terminal B parking and take a shuttle. It's only five minutes, they say. City Field, where the Mets play. That's where you go. But it's 45 minutes to, by the time you get over there, park, get a shuttle. The shuttle takes 8 billion stops. It's not five minutes, it's 45. Okay, fine. So we get there. But we were there very early, so we get there, we wait. And then they're now, now we're waiting in the thing. And they're wait. they're like, the flight's oversold. The flight's oversold. Uh, well, volunteers, four hundred dollars, five hundred dollars. Mm. We're offering up a voucher trip to six hundred dollars. They keep going up. Eventually, no one's taking it. Yeah. Eventually, at twelve hundred dollars, <laughs> at twelve hundred dollars, they needed four volunteers. Gets up to twelve hundred dollars. So four people finally say, "Fine, we'll take it." At a twelve hundred dollar voucher, <laughs> we'll take it. Okay, so now they're like, "Okay, great. Now that we've gotten four people off the flight, you guys can get on." So we get on, and the captain goes on, because it took so long, we missed our window to leave. So now we have to go back in line. And, of course, LaGuardia, one of the busiest yeah, airports in America. Yeah. So they, t- you know. And so, so we're waiting there. We're on the tarmac. We're waiting, waiting, waiting. It's an FFA, FAA rule that you can't wait more than three hours on the tarmac. So we waited in the plane on the tarmac for three hours. Again, we leave an hour late because no one wants to give up their seat on this flight. Um, and we're actually flying to Birmingham, Alabama, because it was for my kids' orientation. So it's my wife and, and uh, Connor, my, my 18-year-old. And so the three of us, since we're sitting there, we're on a flight. for, And it's a bunch of kids, by the way, going to Alabama. I mean, who's going to Birmingham unless you're... Right. Um, and so that's the closest airport to Tuscaloosa, in case anyone's like, hey, I thought Alabama was... A... So anyway. It's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. So, um, so we wait three hours on the tarmac. Then they're like, FAA regulations have to come back. We have to deplane. And now we're waiting. And then by the time we deplane, and they're like, well, you know, wait till we get this window, all of a sudden bad weather starts up. And now it's delayed again. And then eventually, like, 
three hours after that, they canceled the flight. Okay. Oh, well, the day. And so we have to then drive back. And so, by the way, 100 bucks to park just to wait in the airport all day, three hours on <laughs> the like The 45 minute uh, shuttle. 45 minute shuttle. Uh, well, we have to take a 45 minute shuttle back. Ours wasn't this bad. Yeah. Well, three things. One, that story wasn't short at all, um, despite okay. you promising it. Two, I really like LaGuardia. Actually, they've modernized it. It's very good. It's in a very good spot. The airport itself Terminal is nice. Is really the airport good. itself is great. It's my favorite yeah. of the three New York airports. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's I agree. on the way up. Three, let's get to your draft rankings, Connor. There uh, we go. Let's go to your big board, which is headlined by the great Maserati Marv. That's Marv right. Jr. Who will Ohio not State. be doing anything at the combine because he's so good he does not have to. He's focusing on playing football. Marvin Harrison Jr., the best player in this draft, followed by Joe All and then Caleb Williams at number three overall. He's going to be the first pick in the draft. Malik Neighbors, who I think does not get talked about enough, although that's changing. I mean, Malik I is a some special people, player. I have seen some people say Malik Neighbors over Marvin Harrison Jr. Yeah. Have you seen that talk? I have, and it's a little rich for my blood, but Malik would be the number one wide receiver in almost any other draft class. I mean, really, if you exclude the Jamar Chase draft class, he would right. always be the number one guy. That's how special he is. Yeah. And when you come from LSU – they churn out NFL oh. wide receivers like no other program, it feels like, yeah. besides Ohio State. I right. want Malik. I want Malik on Big Blue. He's the guy. That really perfect kind of, pick for them. Yeah. The question is, I, I don't think he makes it there. I really don't. From everything That's I've been hearing around here, he doesn't make it to six. You think uh, he goes to the Chargers? He could go to the Chargers. We'll see if there's a conversation at four with Arizona. We'll yep. see if there's a conversation. What, am I getting Marvin Harrison Jr. at six? Could he fall? No. no. Not six. Okay. His absolute biggest fall would be five. Okay. Yeah. All right. He'll, I think it just depends on whether the Patriots trade down, whether they do a quarterback or whether okay, they decide. So right. you think the top five is going to be Williams, May, Daniels, and then the two receivers? Yep, and Daniels and order. May can yep. go in some order, yep. and then the two receivers could go in some order. I think Marvel will still be the first one, but they could okay. go in some order. But, yeah, we're – I mean, nine of the first ten picks, I think, are going to be offense oh, in this draft. It's great that my Giants have the pick six yeah. then, because those yeah. are the five guys you I want. Brock Bowers or Roma Dunze? Uh, yeah, all right. They're both That's good. Okay. Yeah. They're both I'll, good. I'll be great. It's going to be. It's going to be. I think the important part for our conversation is that it's going to be a. A lot of times, the the first round, especially, is not particularly fantasy friendly. It's defensive linemen. It's, oh, it's this offensive year. linemen. It's it's safeties, that kind of stuff. And then there's like a quarterback or two. But as we've seen from C.J. Stroud and Anthony Richardson. And what little he played, like rookie quarterbacks can make an impact, obviously, immediately, as can wide receivers. You know, there's not going to be any running backs probably in the first round, but very fantasy friendly and important. Brock Bowers, of course, an elite tight end. So very fantasy friendly uh, first round this year. Yeah, well, let's, let's take, take a look, look at, at, yeah. at your yeah. top 10 uh, fantasy prospects, Connor, headlined by Marvin Harrison Jr. again. Now, I'm fascinating to see how this changes when these guys actually get landing spots, because if you put Marvin Harrison Jr., with the Patriots, and you put Malik Neighbors to the Chargers, there's a world where Malik Neighbors is a more exciting fantasy sure. player for us this year because of the quarterback situation. But uh, the guys we don't talk about, uh, you know, Brian Thomas Jr., he is a freakish talent in terms of a deep threat and can make plays above the rim. He's going to go in the first round. We're kind of circling this. Who are the Bills and the Chiefs going to draft? Yeah. And if one of them is Brian Thomas Jr. or Troy Franklin, they are going to be the talk of town in fantasy because I, they both need wide receivers. I will tell you, just talking with a bunch of people around um, here at the Combine, one of the nuggets that will be in my rumors column, the Bills are going to move on from Gabe Davis. Yeah. Like, you know, just feels pretty – Pretty clear there, but also um, listening to um, listening to uh, Coach McDermott and uh, and Brandon Bean, their general manager, yesterday in their press conference, they te kept talking about explosive plays and the importance of explosive plays, and that they've looked at this, and so it does feel like you know the best wide receiver on their board that's available to them in the first round seems to make a lot of sense because they need they've talked openly about needing a number two opposite Stephon Diggs. They don't think Gabe Davis is that guy. Yep. I think as well in terms of landing spots, like everyone is really hyper focused on the Chargers being super fantasy friendly because obviously they have Justin Herbert as their quarterback. I think the Cardinals are an underrated, really fantasy friendly oh, landing sure. spot just because uh, it went under the radar because they won four games for the season. They were kind of irrelevant. But like when Kyler came back, they were a top 10 offense. And Kyler Murray, who I think has become the most underrated player in football, Kyler Murray two years ago was like the MVP favorite right. halfway through the season. Yeah. The Cardinals were a one seed and Cliff Kingsbury was coach of the year favorite. And then uh, he's obviously gone now to your team but sure. i do think that kyla uh in that offense he's gonna if he has malik neighbors or malik of marvin harrison jr like that all of a sudden could be an absolute wag especially because by the way there there's no guarantee that hollywood brown comes I back think he's gone the, yeah i mean so it's looking more like we like michael wilson there right we like trey mcbride quite a bit but you know no, do they have a true number one uh on that team here you know the human dorch of course always a factor but 
Uh, I will say that. <laughs> O'Reilly effect. Though. Yeah, no, stop it. We love Greg Dorch here. We're big fans of Greg Dorch, human Dorch, uh, here at the happy hour. I, yeah, I mean, I just think it's really interesting. Here's a question for you. So I'm in a dynasty league, um, and and the, and what we do with the dynasty in this particular, I'm in a bunch of them, but this, in this particular dynasty league, I have the number one pick, on purpose. I tanked this year. Right. I had won, I'd won uh, two of the last three years, and but my team got a lot older and had some injuries this year, and so I was just like, you know what, tanking. So uh, I have the opportunity. It's a super flex league. I have Mahomes and Purdy as my quarterbacks. I'm pretty good oh, at pretty, the quarterback spot. It's good living. Yeah. Um, so. And it's but and it's tight and premium. You have to do the draft before the NFL draft. So we will do our draft. You have to pick the player before you know their landing spot. So my question is, is it Marvin Harrison Jr.? Is it Malik Neighbors? Is it Brock Bowers in a tight end premium dynasty league? That's the the hang up that throws everything to it. To me, it's still Kyle Marv. Pitts went number one overall his year that he came out over Trevor Lawrence. To some, you know, controversy, but but my point is is like it's not a crazy question. What's your tight end situation too? I have I have uh, I have Kelsey. Oh, I'm take it back. I have Hawkinson. I traded Kelsey at the end of the last year. Okay, so, for, so I'm I have, taking Marv. I have, I have yeah. Hawkinson. He's you just Marv can't is pass. who I have on my board right now. I think it kind of depends on if you're confident the Patriots are going quarterback right. at three, because that's where you really don't want him to end up. Because if right. they take him at three, obviously they're not getting a quarterback in the same spot, uh, and then you might be out, you know, a couple of years of Marvin Harrison not doing a ton on a on a weak offense. But he's just so good too. And if he goes to New England where he's funneled so much number one production, even yeah, from sure. Mac Jones. But I agree with you, Jay. It's a scary situation. But yeah. it's I think the decision, honestly, might be even easier than it kind of originally sounded. I sort of just kind of, I, you know, I'm, I'm just going Marvin Harrison. I'm not overthinking this. Right. Yeah, but yeah. Just, You'll be I happy. Have, I've heard a lot of people talk about it's picking Malik up. Neighbors. It's you know, picking that, up. That, hey, Malik Neighbors over. Uh, so I was just curious your opinion. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah, I'm likely going Marvin Harrison. Heads up, DFB League. You ready? Uh, you ready to tag team this? Oh yeah, we yeah. got a uh, we got yeah. a promo code. I had a feeling I'd have to remind we have you. A, yeah, thanks. <laughs> I appreciate okay. that. I don't know why Stephen didn't we'll, have me start. But anyway, start. The, your whole big board is available on uh, rotoworld.com and yes. NBCSports.com. After the combine, it'll expand to a top 100, and I will have all of my thoughts from the NFL Combine, the biggest winners as well. Everything's free up on NBCSports.com. By the way, people love the Traders, as you see it here. It's a Peacock original, the Traders. It's a back with a new season of strategy, betrayal, and sabotage. This is right up your alley, Jay Croucher. (laughs) Betrayal, sabotage. This is you. This time, an all-celebrity cast returns to a Scottish castle for the ultimate ultimate murder mystery competition. Plus, get this, DraftKings and Peacock have teamed up to bring fans free-to-play pools leading up to the Traders finale. Go to DraftKings.com slash The Traders to enter for free today. And you can stream new episodes of The Traders Thursdays at 9 p.m. Eastern, only on Peacock. People love this show. Remember when I talked about the fact that there were two shows in the top ten uh, of overall programming? This is one of them? This is one of them. All right. So make sure you do the free-to-play pool, courtesy of DraftKings. Eligibility restrictions apply void where prohibited. See DraftKings.com slash The Traders for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or 8778 877-8- Hope and Y slash text Hope and Y four six seven three six nine and Y. Help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Uh, 18 plus in most eligible states, but age varies by jurisdiction. Eligibility restrictions apply. Void where prohibited. See terms at DraftKings.com. They made me read all of that for Jay. Yeah, no, no. Well, I got the fun one. You, yeah, But just so you – did you write that down, Jay? 1-800-GAMBLER. <laughs> You have to be in New York. That's for New York. But for you, should just I just hear. Here's the numbers. Just when we here, get back Jay, to Laguardia, Jay. Can, we have a lot of time there. When get back to Laguardia, yeah, okay. yeah just one eight hundred gambler. Talk yeah, to somebody. Help you. yourself out. Thank you, Matthew. No, I just think it was great leadership that you gave the legal aids to Connor to read out. Yeah. Uh, you didn't want to do it yourself. <laughs> Dan Quinn would never. Yes. Yeah. How about All the right. cruelest NFL betrayals? Yes. We'll do Inspired a little vote here. by our the, friends the at traders. the Traders. <laughs> Brett Favre playing his final two seasons for Minnesota after a long stay in Green Bay. Yeah, nobody remembers the Jets here, sadly. <laughs> Bill Belichick yeah. resigning from New York and becoming head coach in New England. I remember that one. Cleveland relocating to Baltimore in 1995. That one a lot of people still do not forgive to this day. Or Bobby Petrino leaving Atlanta in the middle of the 2007 <laughs> season. Um. You know what's interesting that's not listed here is 
the Baltimore Colts leaving in the middle of the night to go to Indianapolis, here yeah. in Indianapolis. That was also – because that was like middle of the night and whole thing. Like that might be my vote for trail. Otherwise, I'd save Cleveland. Yeah. I'm surprised that um, Croucher and Rogers ditching Barry at the Venetian registration desk didn't make it as a right. uh, NFL I all-time that. betrail. No. I, I, I'd probably that. have that over Petrino. Place. I, I pitched it. Producer Steven like, uh, nixed it, I think. He was just bitter because he wasn't in Vegas, yeah. unfortunately. How do Jets fans feel about Belichick now? Oh, they hate him. Yeah. But they don't. I don't think it's a hate that he left. I think it's oh, a hate. Won a lot. Just because he won kicked a lot. his ass. Yeah, kicked, yeah, yeah. Kicked your, kicked your ass yeah. for a long time. I don't think at the well, time everyone was like, how did we lose this guy? Yeah, I don't well, think f- you'll always have 2010 when uh, that's the year that you took Rex him Ryan. down. Yeah. Lose 45 3 and then beat him in the divisional yep. round. Yeah. Can't yeah. take it away from us. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't Sanchez. think Favre, I don't think Favre was a betray. They no, they wanted no. out of Favre. Like the Packers wanted, yeah, they, they wanted to go. They had Aaron Rodgers. They wanted right. to. Right. It's not like he completely tortured them for another six years or anything like that no, in Minnesota. No, no, that no. one's he not was, too bad. Yeah, he was good for one year in Minnesota and not good the second year in Minnesota. No, the second year was, was really he, bad. Yeah, he was, he was bad with the Jets. Then he had a good year that first year in Minnesota. Then he was bad the second year and. Yep. So can then, picture him throwing the ball across his body in the NFC title game in New Orleans, which is a game they really should have won the Vikings, and then they may well have won the Super Bowl, but yeah, alas. Very well. But then now he's, you know, involved in investigations and lawsuits in <laughs> uh, Mississippi, I believe, right? Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. We'll, we'll avoid that. Uh, last call. Let's look yeah, at the top That's actually, if we were props. going to mention Brett Favre and the Traders, it should have been that. <laughs> that would have been very fitting. Right. Uh, Steven somewhere is like, please, please end the show at the uh, Combine. Alleged. Give us one. All alleged. <laughs> All Top. alleged. I don't think it's been proven. Yeah. Hey, uh, hey, Connor, real quickly for you. DraftKings yeah. has come up with some fun combine markets where you can bet on the best times. We'll see in the 40-yard dash, three-cone drill, 20-yard shuffle. What jumps out at you here so Jay can trail you because he's not going to get a chance to call 1-800-GAMBLER <laughs> until he gets back to New York? Oh, man, I think somebody could run a 4-2-6, which, which would make the fastest 40-yard dash cash uh, faster. That'd be minus 115. That's the one I'd look at. Anthony Gould is somebody. Yeah. He's a returner prospect. He's going to absolutely fly at this event. There's a handful of guys that are timing in the four twos in training right now. So I would actually take the faster than four two six five seconds prop on fastest 40 yard dash. Well, things like the shuttle and the three cone can be a little bit more unpredictable because of the schedule and the times don't translate the same from their workouts to here where the 40 can be somewhat reliable. Would you, would you, based on that, would you take like the, uh, on like the three cone, would you, would you take like a slower then? Cause yeah, the, I mean, that's, that's why well, it's, it's minus 150. The, yeah. Though. I mean, six, uh, when you're looking at faster than a six, two, nine, that is flying. Just guys don't do that in yep. the three cone. So that, that one is set really right. I would not go faster on the three cone. The shuttle, I would call pretty even. Somebody okay. could break that three, eight, nine, five faster on the shuttle. But the three cone, no, I don't see any value on that. I don't think anybody will break that number. And the 40 is the fun one to watch and bet on. Oh, for sure. Yep. Um, Jay, you uh, you have any thoughts there? Or are you just you're just pounding Pacers bets while you're here? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm just betting on um, yeah, Karis LeVert and the Cavs. Um, <laughs> no, I'm just disappointed um, that we didn't actually get to do our own 40. Maybe we do that back uh, back in Connecticut. Yeah. Because uh, I would like. I think that would be good content for pro or, day or, season or terrible content. Yeah. Either way. Yeah. Wait till. Yeah. If you just if you just want to see an, Barry. Oh, yeah. yeah. If you, you would win. I'm almost <laughs> positive because I'm like, you know. Uh, we were actually talking about last night um, at dinner after Connor and I arrived 90 minutes late yeah. um, about what we would all be best at in terms of a, a combine event. And it was kind of jarring how quickly Connor said bench press in a way that was kind That's of a the little best upsetting. That's what I'd be best upsetting. at. Yeah. <laughs> no, be best oh, right. bench press. Uh, among us, you'd be, you'd be best at the bench press. That, that is true. I'm trying to think. I'm not I, running fast. That's yeah, I'm guaranteed. not running fast either. I'm probably yeah. not doing the three cone drill. I'm not a bad thrower, despite what we see on proper shot. I'm <laughs> you no, mean, that's, like, but that's, that's not a combine one thing event. we can definitively yes. prove you are bad at. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have the footage. Matthew Berry really will be throwing run. at the I combine. Yeah, I will, <laughs> Matthew Berry will throw at the combine. Yeah, I'm not going to wait for that. Matthew Berry plans to do everything at the combine, especially <laughs> stay at high velocity till it closes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so. uh, exactly. Well, is it, do, they, do they do the thing where they, they jump and they try to get the, you know, the, yeah, the vert? The, the vert. Yeah. Yes. I could do the vert. You could do the vert. I think I would have a higher vert. one of the hooks. I think I could hit one of the hooks. I okay. think I would. Be, wow. I, I think okay. I could do. Uh, Matthew Barry, Zach Levine. You're tall, so yes. it's, it's that might not that might be tough. I could be Connor does, the Bird. But it doesn't matter. <laughs> Height doesn't matter. <laughs> it's about the it, jump. They, they set it for <laughs> yeah. your jump. Oh, then okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, then, then, you're yeah close. then I got a shot. Yeah. Right. Then I got a shot. I think I could. 
Uh, yeah, take man. You guys. A lot I'll of good props courtesy of DraftKings. DraftKings Sportsbook is an official sports yeah. betting partner of the NBA. And this season, new customers can deposit $5 and get a bonus bet back up to $1,000. If your first bet doesn't hit, down the app thousand bucks. and use the promo code Barry. Yes, you have to use the promo code Barry when you sign up. DraftKings, DraftKings Sportsbook. Sportsbook. The, the crown is yours. yours. Man, it's great that this place is really clearing out and everybody could hear us do <laughs> yeah. that. It's phenomenal. Exactly. I'm trying to see who's back there. I saw Kevin Sapansky talking while we were yeah, maybe while he'll come over the show. Yeah. Maybe he will. Well, maybe he won't. Maybe, probably won't. Uh, hopefully he's not here with Joe Flacco. The good news, guys, <laughs> as we wrap up here, we're now We back. can tell him how much money you <laughs> lost yes. because Joe Flacco won Comeback Player yeah. of the Year. I actually would like to do Florio that. Florio was jabbing me about that before because he didn't vote Hamlin. Oh, <laughs> so no. man. Oh, no. <laughs> to be fair, he didn't vote Flacco either. He voted Mayfield, which I think which was is a good vote. defensible. It's I a good vote. Mayfield. Mayfield's defensible. I think kind of Mayfield kind of should have won. Yes. Uh, yeah, Based thought. on the actual coming back and playing great football. Yeah. Flacco played five games and threw eight picks. Mayfield yeah. played well for a whole season. Anyway, yeah, I can't, let us I can't keep playoffs. talking about this. Yes. Tomar- <laughs> It'll never Tomar die. Hamlin only It'll beat never death. Die. Yeah. He just beat death. <laughs> yeah. He beat, you know. Doesn't count for what it used to. Apparently yeah. not. He- yeah. I'm not sure Jesus would have got as big of a run in 2024, apparently. No. We don't care would Jesus have lost that. comeback player of the year <laughs> yeah, after Joe being Flacco. resurrected? Yeah. That's a good question. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It makes yeah. you think. Well, Joe Flacco did throw that past the Jerome Ford, so maybe he does beat Jesus. So uh, <laughs> full interviews, the, the full interviews uh, that I did here at the Combine, including with Dan Quinn and all the ones that the guys from PFT did, they're all up on the NFL on NBC YouTube channel, so go check yeah. all that out. we got some great information. Connor, I know you're going to talk to a bunch of prospects over the next couple of days. Eight today. I yep. think quite a few tomorrow and the next two days after that. So, yeah, a lot of the receivers, which I'm really excited to yep. Bring some of that info to our show next time we record, which will be next week on Thursday. Next week on Thursday. But some of that stuff will be on the NFL on NBC all YouTube it. channel. Yep, all info. of it will be. Yeah. So check all that. Connor's uh, top, what, are, it's going to be 100? I'll top, do 100 next. Top 100 yeah, next. slowly That's grows. On NBCSports.com, so go uh, check that out. My Combine Rumors column will also be out on Monday on Rotoworld.com and NBCSports.com. Jay contributes nothing. Yes, I'll continue Sponsored by betting Dollaritas. on uh, yeah. the Cleveland Cavaliers by myself. Yeah, yeah. there you go. <laughs> I have to say, before we do get off, uh, so when we were here at the crack of dawn, because we yeah. just start the interviews early mm-hmm. here, I did open Twitter for a second, and Jay is just <laughs> NBA tweeting <laughs> rapidly. <laughs> rapidly. Like, you think, like, sleeping, breakfast, yeah, yeah. not here. Not uh, here. And he didn't need to be. He didn't uh, have anything to do until this show. Yep. Sure, sure. Just firing off. Firing off. NBA takes from the combine. Yeah. I feel like I didn't get a good enough reception to comparing Jeff Adams to Andre Iguodala before. I feel it's like sneaky. it's really It's, it's not really out. Well, that's Jeff. It's a glue guy on a championship team. Yes. Indispensable. It's, one finals MVP. And that's how Jeff Adams. That's true. That's true. That is. All Jeff right. is the glue that keeps <laughs> us together. There's no question about it. Without Jeff, we would all be screwed. Uh, no, indeed. That, uh, we would all be screwed. All right. Well, I think that's it. That's it. We're done. <laughs> there you go. All yeah. right. Well, listen, it's closing time, which means you don't have yeah. to go home. Go but home. You can't peace out. Stay all the fun. here. Jay Croucher, Connor Rogers, Dan Quinn, uh, Joe Ortiz, <laughs> Doug Peterson, and Andy Reid. I'm Matthew Berry. Peace out. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBCSports.com and Rotorworld.com, and I want to thank you so much for watching whatever it is you just watched, or if nothing else, being too lazy to click out of the autoplay after this video started, after whatever it is you actually wanted to watch finished. But now that you're here, I'd like to take a moment here to ask you respectfully, respectfully now, okay, I'm asking you respectfully to subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel. You'll get the latest Roto World fantasy news headlines, all sorts of great shows, including my own fantasy football happy hour. So go subscribe now. Again, I'm asking respectfully.